Welcome to Robin Spears Live Online, Calgary's real estate hotline. I'm Robin and I want to hear any questions you've got about real estate. As always, you can leave your questions in the comment section below or if you want to keep them private, send us a private message or email us at info at robinspears.com. So I'm just about to start the live Q&A. Before I do, I want to wish everyone a happy long weekend. Hope you all had a good long weekend. I certainly did. Uh, anyway, that's why we didn't do a live online yesterday. Um, the other thing is uh, just a reminder, if you've got a friend or family member that has a question about real estate, go ahead and tag them in the comment section below. Or actually, if you want, you could even put their, if you know their question, you could put their question in the comment section below, tag them, put their name in there, and uh, they'll, they can always tune in later or they can tune in now. Uh, but anyway, so we'll get to the questions here. Uh, First question that was sent in, how do I know if the property I'm buying is a good deal? Well, there's no science in determining whether a property is a good deal uh, or will appreciate, but with some research, you can certainly keep surprises to a minimum. First of all, start with comparable properties in the area, both actives and sold. So first, I'll talk about the active properties. Don't confuse active properties with properties that are the right price because uh, you can price it at any price you want and just because something is priced where it is doesn't necessarily mean it's the right price or a price that's going to help it sell. Uh, and just a quick stat, uh, less than half the properties right now that go on the market don't sell and because some are ridiculously priced that's one of the reasons they don't sell. So, And even if you can convince a buyer to pay an, an overinflated price, um, when it wouldn't appraise and then their financing is going to fall through anyway. So, but what you can use active properties for is a basis for comparison. So for instance, um, if you've got four other properties that are comparable to yours on the market and you want to position yours competitively, well, knowing where those four uh, our price gives you an indication where you should maybe price yours. If you make sure yours is the most expensive out of the four, it's a very good chance you're going to have to wait for those others to f other four to sell before you get your sold. So something to keep in mind. But anyway, getting back to the sold properties, they're the ones that really give you an idea of value most of the time because it shows you what buyers are willing to pay in today's market, provided the sold properties you're comparing are recently sold and recently sold we we mean sort of in the last 90 to 180 days depending on the type of market if you're in a really stagnant market you can maybe go back further than 180 days uh, but certainly in a in an active market where things are uh, changing you want to look at the last 90 days if you can another factor is uh, you know whether or not you're in an ascending market or a descending market so again if you're wondering if something's a good deal the the type of market you're in can have an effect on it but uh, the biggest thing to consider is you know location the type the neighborhood you're in so even if you're in a great neighborhood if you're in a bad location in that neighborhood then you know it's probably not going to appreciate more buying a property in a great location is going to give you way more potential for appreciation uh, than one that's not in a good location. So those are some of the ways you can uh, alleviate or know if you're, the property you're buying is a good deal. Uh, another question that came in was, uh, should I get a home inspection? Now I believe I talked about this a number of weeks back. Um, yes is the, the quick answer, uh, definitely. Um, and I want to tell you a story, I think I probably shared this story the last time I uh, talked about this question as well, but I had a client I don't know, it was their 10th purchase. They, they, they're they a professional buying flipper and they said, look, Robin, why do I waste the 500 bucks? The last, ten, the last nine, you know, I've spent uh, $4,500 and to spend another 500, you know, that's five grand in the last 10 properties. Do I really need to do that? Because we've never come across one where the home inspection really made a difference and I could have saved that $500. And I said, well, you just never know. Even with this property, you just don't know. So anyway, long story short, they reluctantly went ahead with the home inspection. Home inspection revealed about $24,000 worth of foundation problems that uh, we were able to negotiate off the price. And of course, my clients, uh, I asked them, 
did you uh, feel that the home inspection was worthwhile? And, <laughs> and uh, they looked at me and said, uh, yeah, you just saved me uh, $23,500, uh, you know, 24000 minus the home inspection. But anyway, it was obviously well worth it. And all it takes is one property that has a lot of uh, problems with it. And the type of problems you want a home inspector for are the type of problems that you can't see. And they're usually big ticket items, you know, like foundation or roof or something more drastic than that. So anyway, uh, it's one of the largest purchases you're ever going to make. So spend the 500 plus dollars. It's worth it to have the peace of mind. So uh, and then uh, last question is, uh, is landscaping a good investment? Well, this is an interesting one, uh, not one that I've come across a lot. Um, the first the first way I'll respond to that is uh, a home that's in show home condition is more likely to sell than something and for more money than something that's not. Now with, you got to be careful there because you can go and spend too much money on renovations or making a property look like a show home that you won't get your money back. Uh, general rule of thumb in, in uh, as far as landscaping goes it should sort of match the inside. If you've got no landscaping, no grass, but you've got a gorgeous inside to your home, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't match. So you're gonna get people that come in and love your home, but they're not gonna to wanna to spend the 10 to $20,000 on the landscaping because they're wondering, you know, you've got this beautiful home, but you didn't finish it. There's, there's the outside that needs work too. Uh, and likewise, if you've got a, a dumpy home that needs a lot of work and you've got meticulous landscaping, that doesn't match either. So I think it should match your home, it should also um, you should keep up with your neighbors or maybe even a little more. Um, you know, if you're in a, a cul-de-sac or even a, a street where uh, everyone's got meticulous landscaping and, you know, you've got these brown patches all over your lawn, that's not going to look so good and you're going to uh, have trouble selling if, um, if that's what you're wanting it for. Uh, as far as um, if you want landscaping for your own personal enjoyment then you know don't worry about the good investment or not then just you know get um, get the landscaping you want there's uh, two schools of thought there you can uh, put money into your home with the idea of getting it back out later or you can uh, put money into your home for your own enjoyment and there's really no limit when you're doing it for your own enjoyment whether or not you uh, 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 get money back later so yeah, I, I'd say that landscaping, it's not one of those things that's um, necessarily going to give you a huge return, but it also depends on where you live, and so that can have an effect. Anyway, um, hopefully uh, those questions uh, were uh, answered to your satisfaction. If you actually have any further questions or clarification on these questions, feel free to get in touch and happy to uh, uh, elaborate more. So that's all the time I've got for today. Uh, again, uh, if you uh, felt this was worthwhile, please like it and share it. And uh, please uh, keep sending in the questions so we can keep uh, doing these Facebook Lives and getting your questions answered. So thanks for joining in. And uh, next, next week, it'll be on Monday as, as usual. And uh, again, hope you guys had a good long weekend. And uh, stay cool today. It's supposed to be a hot one. Bye, everyone.